What's up, YouTube? We're back, Xavier, and like I promised in the last video, this time we're going to talk about our land purchase. Now, the very first time I thought in my mind about buying land was back in 2019. And it was actually a really special time, and I attribute my whole urge and this whole desire to own land to my wife. Because see, what happened back in 2019, my wife actually got us a hotel, a nice little spot in Houston. And we were planning on driving to Houston, but we weren't going to take the major highways and byways that be, right? We weren't really in a rush. So we decided to take the more scenic route. And it was that choice to take the scenic route that forever altered my perspective and perception on what I thought was possible. See, up until that point, just being real, coming from where I come from, people I deal with on a daily basis, people in my family, people in my wife's family, you know, we don't really come from people that own land. They even talk about it. It doesn't really come up in our conversations. But we were driving the scenic route, man. I saw plot after plot, farm after farm, estate after estate. And I'll tell you this, by the time we got to Houston, I knew one thing, I wanted some land for myself. Let's get into it. So now that I had this desire, this, this, this need to purchase and own land, the next thing I had to do was figure out how to go about getting it. So I did what, uh, you know, any logical person would do. I reached out to my real estate agent, you know, same one that did our Del Payne home, same one that uh, did our um, our huddle house. Reached out to him and said, hey, look, this is what we're looking at doing. What do you know about it? And truth be told, you know, he really didn't know that much, but he was excited to get to learn with us. And so we went we went on down the road of trying to find and purchase land. And I'll tell you this. When we were first starting out, we went about purchasing land basically the same way we went about getting our, our two houses. You know, you kind of look online, you know, you find some land that's appealing. You reach out to the sellers, you know, they'll send you some surveys, they'll send you some, some other things. And then we kind of schedule the day, maybe two or three days down the line where uh, our real estate agent will come over the house and we drive out, you know, hour and a half, two hours out to the lots. We kind of compile a little list, maybe five or six properties. And we'd go to each lot, walk around to see how it felt, you know, really get into the spirit of everything. And I'll tell you what, we didn't get a single parcel of land that way. Why? Because it just works different. Buying land is different specifically buying affordable pieces of land is different i'm sure that if you got fat pockets and you're looking to spend three four five six hundred thousand that there aren't too many people out there at least here in texas that are going to be trying to compete with that but we were trying to spend you know we were open to spending between a hundred and twenty thousand and less that is a fat market. That's basically where everyone who's purchasing land in Texas is trying to be. And so we came across some good deals. But by the time we did this whole little, you know, process, land be gone. There, there, there'd already be offers put in on the land. And so we had to come up with a new system on how to do that. And so here's what I came up with because I was seeing this trend of us missing out on good good pieces of land. So what I did was, I just told I, I told my real estate agent straight up, I was like, hey, all right, I wanna research these parcels of land. If I find one that's within our budget and for the acreage that we want, I want you to contact the land and put an offer. So what did this do? It allowed us to take land off the market quickly and then we would go and schedule a time to go see all the parcels of land while we were still under an option period. This worked out extremely well for us. So once we had the desire down, then we had the process to acquire it. You know, we weren't just sitting on some, you know, fat stacks. 
had to figure out how to finance it. Now, truth be told, this is the really was an easy part. It was something I found out early on in the process because I'm a veteran and Texas has a program and an entity, the Veteran Land Board, that actually is whole purpose is designed to give veterans um, financing for land purchases. Now, from what I hear, typically, if you aren't a veteran, you don't qualify for that. It can be a little difficult to get uh, financing or get loans for raw tracts of land that you don't plan on building a home on. You just want to kind of use for recreational or, you know, kind of like a legacy piece. I hear that it's hard. I know there's things out there. There's other options, but I don't have experience with that because we used uh, me being a veteran and the veteran land board in Texas to get our financing. And it's a pretty sweet deal. So if you're a veteran, you're in Texas, you don't know about it. It's a pretty sweet deal. Uh, I think when we guided the interest rates were uh, like 5%. And they give you up to one hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars based on, you know, your income and your credit and stuff like that. We qualify for the full amount. And so they give you up to one hundred fifty thousand dollars to purchase a track of land in Texas on a uh, 30 year on a 30 year mortgage. It's a pretty sweet deal. And that's what we did to uh, purchase our land. And so here's what it came down to. I knew my wife knew we wanted a deal. I mean, heck, right? We. We always wanted a deal. And occasionally deals would pop up and different things would happen, but we had a geographical region pulled up, right? We knew the area in Texas that we wanted our land to be so that we weren't searching this whole state because Texas is massive, especially when you start looking at land. We knew the area and I would search it every single day, seven days a week multiple times a day because that is what it takes if you want to find a legitimate deal out there on some land i mean you can pay the premium right there's these companies and um they, they do it like they like they do uh like they do houses right they they snatch up all these lots they snatch up all these lots they come in with their cash they snatch up all these lots then they split the lots up into smaller tracks and then they sell them for a premium you can buy from these guys you can buy it from them. And you know it's going to be land. It's going to be, most of the time, it's not going to be in a floodplain. You know, stuff like that. There's probably going to be some easements on it because they really don't care. But you're paying a premium for that. You can't really negotiate with them because they're basically investors, right? They have a bottom line. They pay X amount for the thing. And they need to make X amount per track of land so that they can make their profit bounce out and go do it again, right? We didn't want to go that route. We had some dealings with them. We realized, you know what? They don't really care about the story. They don't really care about the land they're just they all they care about is the money so we went through a whole bunch of that but then eventually after i don't know easily a month or two i found the perfect deal the parcel of land that we have right now and this is how it went down so it was listed on land watch at like 17 and a half acres and it was like fifty eight thousand dollars a steal it was listed about $12,000 cheaper than every other piece of land in that area. Hopped on it immediately, used our acquisition method. We dropped the, uh, we dropped a uh, offer on, I think we asked for like maybe two grand off and for them to cover like whatever closing costs there were. And they took it. They took it, they locked it in. We went out there, loved what we saw. We loved the feel of it felt natural, had had some water on the property, a whole bunch of places to explore. It was awesome. We loved it. We loved how far off it was from the main road. Boom. But here's the thing. It gets better. It really does get better. We learned so much from going through this process. When we wrote up the contract, there was a stipulation. You make sure that you guys have this in there too when you guys have your real estate agents or you guys write up yourselves. There was a stipulation that because of the age of the survey on the property, a modern day survey would need it to be, have been done. The price that we negotiated per acre, because that's how you negotiate land, is price per acre. The price per acre was set in the contract so that whether the parcel ended up being bigger or smaller, we paid the same price per acre. Now, had the piece of land ended up being bigger, that would have bit us in the butt. 
because the way it works, at least here in Texas, the bigger the, the tract of land, the less you pay per acre. The smaller the tract of land, the more you pay per acre. But guess what? It did not bite us in the butt. It worked heavily, heavily in our favor. So we got the modern survey done and guess what? Well, the last survey, the last survey that was done on that piece of land was done in 1912. 1912, and yeah, I know what you're thinking. There's probably a big difference in technology between what they had to survey land back in 1912 versus what we have today here in 2020. And guess what? You're absolutely correct. All right. So the land, even though they had it listed at 17, because that's what their 1912 survey said, the land actually came back at being 10.51 acres. And actually, believe it or not, the seller was freaking out because they thought that we weren't uh, still going to be interested in the property. Not only was I still interested, I saw the investment opportunity in it also because we got locked in at a price per acre of like $3,300 per acre, which means that we were going to this 10 and a half uh, acre piece of land for like $36,000 versus what the going rate in the area was at the time, which was 70. All right. To me, that was a no brainer. Will we have liked a little bit bigger piece of land? Yeah. Could I have gotten a bigger piece of land for $36,000? Absolutely not. All right. So we jumped on it. We stayed in the deal. It appraised by the uh, by the county appraiser for like fifty eight thousand. So already we were up on the land. We loved it. All right. We still love it. I made it sound like we don't still have it. We absolutely still have it. I'm holding on to it for a long, long time. Probably going to pass it down. It's our legacy piece. It's our first piece of land. We plan on buying a lot more. Right. And so. The takeaways, the takeaways is something that we didn't really know. It kind of happened that way. But now having gone through it, I would actively do this. If you're looking for land and you want to deal on it, it's for people who want to deal. You want to buy commercial, you do, you, you do your thing. They're out there, right? If you want a deal on the land, it's going to take a lot of research on your part. And so what I would suggest is you pick the geographical region that you want the land to be in. Then you find out how much you want to spend. You already know the acquisition method, right? Drop offers before you actually go see it. Use the option period at that time to go see it. But before you even do that, you want to look up the land in, which, in whichever county it is. You want to find, uh, you can request a survey, you can request this, you can do that. I would personally pay special attention to surveys that are over 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 years. If it's a modern day survey that was done in like 2008, you can be pretty confident that whatever that survey acreage is, is realistically the actual acreage. However, on some of these uh, pieces of land that have been in families for 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 years, with these old surveys, there's an opportunity where the piece of land may not be the actual size that they have listed. And if it's smaller, you can actually lock that in. You can lock in the acreage price for a bigger piece of land and then have it show up be smaller and you get to keep all that equity in the value because you're already locked into a contract. And so I would request, have your real estate agent or you can do it yourself, request from the seller, you know, the parcel ID. Look it up, look up the county records, look up all the information. Look at when the last time a survey was done. Look at the property taxes. Look at what exemptions are on the properties. Look at the easements. And then use all of that to make your decision. And you end up coming up on top. Listen, we got the land, honestly, because I just really wanted land. I wanted land in our family. And it ended up not only providing that, but it also ended up being a really smart investment for us. We were already up about $40,000 and positive equity if we were to turn around and sell the land today, which we're not. Go find your own deal. All right. Hey, well, that's it for today. That's the story on how we bought our land. All right. Hey, as always, as always, before you get out of here, I know you probably already clicked off, but if you haven't and you like the video, can you like the video? All right. Subscribe, click the notification bell, leave a comment down below, share this. It helps out tremendously, helps out tremendously. 
And let me know if you guys want me to talk a little bit more about like the specifics of land, like about easements and about agricultural exemptions and stuff like that, because there's some really interesting stuff there and it can save you a ton of money, a ton of money. But let me know. Let me know. I'll talk about what y'all want me to talk about. So, uh, Xavier, CRC, as always, stay blessed. I'll see y'all in the next one.